out, it's going to smurf! The scenario, it first comes from an idea from Thomas, which was to venture into dreams. This idea emerged from the discovery of an old Game Boy game called the Smurfs Nightmare. We were actually very much used to always seeing the Smurfs in very localized environments. Our intention was basically to step out of this familiar setting of the forest and also the Smurf village, so we could offer something unique to the players. That's why we chose the theme of dreams. And each dream corresponds to the character of a Smurf we need to save. So, for example, Vanity Smurf, with the theme of self-confidence, the idea of losing his mirror, loss of confidence, and how he finally manages to accept who he is to ultimately overcome his demons, so to speak. So all these gameplay ideas, experiences, came from studying common recurring dreams. My favorite is the sequence where the Smurf finds himself in his underwear being watched by giant Smurfs. It's very burlesque. The expression of the theme is done both artistically, with unique worlds in terms of environment and atmosphere, which connect with the theme addressed. For example, with Smurfette, we have an environment split into two parts, an idyllic world and a more arid, evil world, which represents Smurfette's good side that we know and her past as Dark Smurfette, created by Gargamel. So, in each world, you have your gadgets, which unlock new actions and skills. This has allowed us to build very strong universes. We draw inspiration from Peyo with very simple but very colorful shapes. We were inspired by some Pixar or Disney movies like Soul, Wreck-It Ralph, and Trolls, but mostly from the latest Smurfs movie, The Lost Village, with its very successful whoa, whoa, artistic whoa. direction. What? Since the Smurf world is set in a miniature world, all the details are much bigger. The 3D artists who worked on the decor elements were greatly inspired by real objects. For example, in the cook's world with lots of food, candies, cakes, they observed these elements to see how light reflects, how the material reacts. I have a preference, I think, for Vanity Smurf's world, which is set in the clouds and is very interesting, with things disappearing, mirror games, and a city in the clouds, with just this sea and this ocean of clouds, which I really like. There was also a lot of work on the music to capture the Smurf universe, the ambiance. It was a real challenge to find how to convey a dream through music. They were created by Valentin Lafort. He worked on Mission Malfoy and the Smurfs 2 as well. So these are original compositions specifically for the game. The game's atmosphere, I think, is quite light, even though we are dealing with the issue of the whole village being asleep. It's very vibrant, very colorful. There's quite a bit of humor. I would say it's friendly and fun because you can play the game with two players. It's a game where you share an experience together, even if you can play it solo. It's also about having the Smurfs accompany you during the adventure. Because even if you play alone throughout the levels, you always have plenty of Smurfs around you. So it's very friendly and fun because the Smurf universe, even if we tackle complex themes, we always maintain a very joyful atmosphere. When you got a Smurf, you got a Smurf! So, the biggest challenges were first a technical challenge since we switched engines. Compared to Marsupilami, where we used Unity, we switched to Unreal. So we had to learn during production how to use the tool. So the first challenge was to translate our ideas into a new engine for us. Oh no, what a smurf dastrophe! One of our main challenges was to develop the team to ensure we maintained our creative ambitions. For me, the greatest difficulties of the game were making the game work equally well for one or two players. So we had lots of ideas that worked for one player, but when we faced the issue of how does this work for two, sometimes ideas were just scrapped and we came up with new ones. Regarding the community, I think it's about staying true to the license, especially with the real-world setting of the village where we find all our iconic characters and their habits. And then, it's about exploring a new world while keeping the codes of the license. So there's no need to know the license to play the game since it's an original, independent story. So it's a moment in the Smurf universe that players can experience without strong ties to other episodes of the license. Our work with the rights holder was quite smooth. We had a lot of freedom. I found the collaboration in terms of costumes. Even if we had to add new Smurfs, they were very flexible with us. We were able to propose many ideas that were accepted for the game. They were very open-minded from the start of the project, so the collaboration was very positive. We are going to release the best game we can, and we hope it will please the fans. Don't include that part.